Empress Eugenie, a Spanish countess, was the ultimate fashion leader of the 1850s and 60s. As Empress of the French during the Second Empire until its fall in 1870. Eugenie, who was considered one of the most beautiful women in Europe, played a large role in returning the court of France to lavish opulence, and Paris regained its status as a world capital. The Second Empire seemed to recall the ancient regime, and Eugenie, herself being an admirer of Marie Antoinette, drew inspiration from the 18th century, cultivating a style of rich pastel silks, an abundance of bows and ribbons, and undulating floral patterns. Eugenie dominated every aspect of Europe's fashion scene, from the cut, color, and fabric used right down to the length of the hemline. Her gowns, colors, and hairstyles were widely copied all across Europe and America. Her waistcoats were copied and sold by all the fashionable tailors, and the high-heeled riding boots she wore at Compiègne were adopted by every French court lady. The Empress's style was reported in detail by the Vogue magazine of the day, Godet's Ladies' Book. Many of the developments in fashion in the 1850s became associated with Eugenie. Aniline dyes grew in popularity as Eugenie believed it matched her violet eyes. She became synonymous with luxurious crinoline era fashion and was nicknamed La Reine Crinoline or Queen Crinoline by Parisians. She was known for her large crinolines and for rotating her outfits. Public appearances required Eugenie to change gowns several times a day. Along with her twelve ladies-in-waiting, the Empress would change her attire four times a day, with a different dress for the morning, afternoon, evening, and night. And she seldom wore the same gown or pair of shoes twice, even if it was just for a routine court reception. In a fashionable homage, the Eugenie paletot, an impressive woman's coat with enormous bell sleeves and a button closure at the neck, is named after the last empress of France. Eugenie was very fond of this style of coat and helped make it the thing to wear while getting out of the carriage and heading to the ball. For balls, Eugenie ordered two copies of the same ball gown, so during a long evening of dancing, she could retire and put on the second identical gown and reappear looking fresh, while all the other ladies wilted. Such extravagancies called for an enormous wardrobe, which she commissioned and acquired from the best suppliers. Eugenie's support of fashion helped to boost the lagging French luxury industry. One objective of her dressing was to provide work for people in the luxury goods business. Not only did dressing well benefit her personally and reflect well on the throne, but it encouraged others to spend on clothes, which helped the industry. She saw her numerous official duties as prime moments to promote French fashion. Paris dressmakers Madame Vinon and Palmer and milliner Madame Vichel are just some of the French suppliers she patronized. Eugenie helped launch the career of Paris's first couturier, Charles Frederick Worth. An Austrian socialite active in French society, Princess de Metternich, wore a Worth gown to a ball at the Tuileries. Before the ball, the princess visited the emperor and empress in their private apartments. Immediately, the empress was taken with the gown, which she called a marvel of simplicity and elegance. Eugenie asked the princess for the name of the designer and told her to have him call at the palace the next day. Eugenie became Worth's star client, catapulting him to international acclaim. Although his salon was a social place to see and be seen, the only client Worth would travel to was the Empress. She was soon ordering all new garments from Worth, from court dresses and street clothes to ball gowns and masquerade costumes. At the time, Worth's gowns would sell for 300 to 400 francs. After the Empress discovered them, they were upwards of 2,000 francs for each dress. In 1862, Eugenie appeared at the races without a shawl to better show off her Worth gown. At the time, going without a shawl or jacket was unthinkable, but once Eugenie did it, 
women everywhere started leaving their shawls at home in an attempt to imitate the empress. In the late 1860s, Eugenie caused a shift in fashion by replacing the crinoline with Worth's new slimmer silhouettes. Neither Eugenie nor Worth liked crinolines. She found them cumbersome and difficult to move in. The new shape was slimmer in the front, and the crinoline concentrated at the back, forming a bustle. Almost immediately, women in fashionable society adopted the new look. Over the years, Worth provided hundreds of gowns for her, and in 1869 she appointed him the official court dressmaker. To make room in her closet, Eugenie would annually auction off several pieces from her wardrobe she no longer wanted to raise money for charity. The clothes, dresses, shawls, hats, crinolines, and even underclothes were displayed for sale in a large room in the basement of the Tuileries. Most of the customers were female servants at the court. Whatever was not sold was sent to second-hand dealers in the city. As for the shoes, Eugenie gave her once-worn slippers to the young girls at an orphanage she supported. Her feet were quite small, so they fit the children well. Empress Eugenie was, at her time, considered the most fashionable lady in the world. She set the standard for fashion and restored Paris's luxury industry to its former glory. She is perhaps the last royal persona to have a direct and immediate influence on fashion that continues to marvel today.